Hi, my name's Tom. Welcome to part 5, Neural Growth and Regeneration. Let's start off by looking at growth. In embryo, uh, in the beginning, uh, we have these stem cells. They are undifferentiated uh, and they are precursor cells to daughter cells. Uh, these then uh, divide, differentiate, develop and migrate to their final destinations and become neurons or glia. Glia is short for neuroglia. Uh, another name we, uh, that uh, I've called them uh, glial cells. So let's have a look at a growing neuron and um, as you can see we've got an axon here which is growing. We've got these dendrites they're growing out as well. Uh, there's obviously the soma. So this growth cone here, this, this is an enlargement here, um, this is not necessarily what it looks like in reality, this is just to give you a visual. Um, so the growth cone here though is this enlargement at the, the front of the growing axon and it helps guide uh, or it helps direct um, the, the growing axon by, it helps define the target basically, so we have a target here for the neuron, embryonic neuron, and uh, we're trying to get to this target. So the growth cone is helping to do that. Uh, other, uh, and it does this um, by also uh, being influenced by molecules, um, certain molecules which are attracting, supporting, deflecting, or inhibiting the growth of this this axon. Uh, and so these these molecules can be found in the membrane of glia or neurons, and that's embryonic neurons. Um, they can also be found in the extracellular fluid as what we call neurotrophic factors. Sorry, my handwriting is a bit, uh, a bit hard to read. So they can, uh, they can be found in sort of the membrane and also the extracellular fluid. So let's go back to our example for a sec. Um, considering these, these, these uh, influencing molecules that are attracting, supporting, deflecting and inhibiting, the growing neuron or the growing axon um, is going off and sort of, you know, going and they might get deflected or something and it ends up going in sort of a random fashion but eventually it's finding its way to the target and when it gets to the target uh, whoops, when it gets to the target it'll uh, form a synapse which I'll draw like that just label it synapse and once it once it's uh, uh, formed a synapse it actually gets activated and this early activation before the maturation um, actually helps determine the final function of this um, embryonic neuron um, so that's that's an important thing to remember that that it's activated early on so it's activated before maturation uh, and obviously before maturation uh, it's, uh, it's you know still determining its final function so that's the important point. Uh, neural growth occurs uh, during all three trimesters uh, continues into infancy and obviously as it's fairly widely known, uh, drugs and alcohol are a big no-no. Um, they can have permanent and lasting damage uh, on the fetal uh, and or developing uh, nervous system. So it's, yeah, it's really quite, uh, quite important to stay away from those. Uh, also things like um, viruses, uh, actually viruses are quite 
uh, quite big, and, and so so too is things like malnutrition, uh, radiation, etc. So those are all uh, things that can permanently damage uh, the developing or, or fetal nervous system. Uh, a quick note here, which I thought was you know really astonishing and perplexing. Um, once axons have projected, up to 50 to 70 percent of axons die. Um, and you know it's just crazy. Uh, here, here's a you know all this hard work that's been put in, and then you know to just you know get rid of more than half of these neurons. It's just crazy. It's really really strange. And um, so neuroscientists, you know, are still trying to figure this one out. It's a bit of a mystery at the moment. And um, yeah, it's quite quite noteworthy. Uh, you know, an interesting fact. So I thought. Uh, to uh, share that with you. Okay, so after all this growth is done, so after maturation, uh, the basic shape and the structure are set. But synaptic contacts are still being created and destroyed. Okay, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So that was growth. Let's now look at regeneration. So let's 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 just imagine for a second that we're in the, the peripheral nervous system and we have a neuron, here's the cell body, here's its axon, and here's the synapse. Let's imagine for a second that this gets severed like that. What's gonna happen? Well the, the part of the neuron which isn't, um, which isn't connected to the cell body is going to degenerate. So all this here is going to degenerate. And then uh, we actually get a... Oh, whoops. Sorry, guys. Uh, we get a growth cone. So this is in a mature nervous system. Um, and we get a growth cone here uh, after it's been after this uh, segment has degenerated. And so the axon is able to re regrow, you know, back down to the target organ or tissue or you know muscle, whatever it is, neuron. So that is um, really fantastic. Um, the only thing is, is that this all this this growth here happens at about one millimeter per day, so that's quite slow. Um, and in fact, if for example your ring finger on your right hand, uh, say uh, your it was an afferent neuron, uh, it got damaged up at your shoulder, uh, it it could take more than two years. Uh, for sensation, for that that neuron to, to, to that afferent neuron to regrow, so it could take more than two years for sensation to come back. Um, now, you know, granted, sensation is coming back, which is good. Uh, it just takes a long time. Um, it doesn't always happen, uh, by the way. It's you know, um, it's not guaranteed. So, um, so that's great. So you know, that, I mean, it's oh, sorry, not great that. It's not guaranteed, but great that there's still the possibility of this regrowth. Um, conversely, when we look at the CNS, um, it's really quite a different story. First of all, you should know in the CNS, uh, for example, a spinal cord injury, it's uh, more it, the, the damage is is less. There's less severing um, and more crushing. So let's draw a neuron in the CNS. Again, that's the axon. Here's the synapse. And so there's more crushing. And remember, um, in the CNS, we have these, uh, these cells called oligodendrocytes, right? Which are providing the myelin sheath to our CNS neurons. 
And when, uh, when there's a crushing uh, injury, which is more likely or more common uh, in a spinal cord in injury, the oligodendrocytes are damaged and they actually they undergo apoptosis, cell death, you know, self-destruction. So that's going to die and so we, we no longer have the uh, myelinated uh, structure. So this, uh, first of all, is going to go a lot, a lot slower. Um, so that, so that's you know, assuming there's been no severing as well. So, you know, if if this was also severed, then this is going to degenerate like it did in the PNS. And actually, uh, one really um, frustrating part of of all this in the CNS is if this was the point which was severed, then actually um, the the CNS neurons won't be able to regrow past that site. So actually, that th they just can't go any farther than that. Um, so that is really, you know, that's really quite bad uh, if that happens high enough up up your spine, that's going to be really quite a problem. Um, so a lot of research obviously has been done in this area at the moment, so it's still a, a bit of a, an unsolved puzzle as to why uh, you know, it won't grow past that point um, of damage. And you know, there's a lot of uh, research being done as, you know, as to you know, the environmental factors which are influencing this um, this lack of regeneration in the central nervous system compared to the peripheral nervous system. Um, there's also uh, a few researchers looking into using uh, fetal brain tissue um, in, you know, and then putting that into uh, an adult or mature nervous system, you know, central nervous system to um, to regrow um, or you know to restore certain functions um, but obviously there's a lot of heated ethical debate about about uh, that type of research but uh, yeah we won't enter that enter into that now um, so yeah I think um, yeah I think that's probably given you a good overview of regeneration and uh, and neural growth as well this has been part five neural growth and regeneration